I'm CEO of Leviab Group USA. Leviab Group is a multi-billion dollar conglomerate founded by my father. We have a wide range of industries, real estate, diamond, jewelry, technology, energy. I run the US operation of that. Leaving Israel uh, was a very challenging decision. I had to leave my family behind, my friends, my job. I was facing a lot of challenges. People don't expect a girl, a religious one, a woman, uh, to be in this field and, and pushing her agenda. There was always these little noises around people telling me that I was looking at the wrong direction. I never let people's thoughts mislead me and my instincts. Whatever I need to do, I'm focused on my mission and accomplishing it. And that's the bottom line. Imagine this scene for one quick moment. We were about to meet the lovely Chagit Levayev for a lunch meeting about a year ago in Cafe K in Manhattan. We were organized and I thought I had calculated time correctly. But as soon as we sat down, I went like this. Oh no. I had obviously miscalculated one important thing. I needed to pump. I also thought I was very organized until I reached into my bag only to notice I was missing one very important thing, my pump. I could already feel the onset of a leak. Do not worry, said Chagit. I've got one in my office upstairs. Minutes later, the pump arrived. Naturally, we proceeded to chat while I pumped and the three of us enjoyed our conversations over tuna tartar. I just read a meme the other day that I loved. To women who are expected to work like they don't have children, and to raise children as if they don't work. To those women, l'chaim to you. We are honored to introduce today's keynote speaker, Chagit Levayev, who is pumping and crushing it all at the same time, every single day. Thank you, Chagit. Thank you, Simi and Chaya, for the beautiful introduction. What a memory. Good morning, ladies. I'm honored, inspired, and so grateful to be standing here today at the JWE conference. But more than that, I feel fortunate, not for who I am and what I've accomplished, but for what all of you and I share. We share the privilege of our celebrating being JWE, Jewish Women Entrepreneurs. Each letter of what the organization stands for doesn't come easy, but we're committed to defending like no woman does. Each letter is a part of who we are, and we're fiercely protecting and constantly redefining those values. I felt privileged to join the JWE as a board member earlier this year, as it's an organization whose values align so perfectly with mine. One that recognizes the changing times and the power of what a woman can achieve. Business can be a lonely place for us women. And being together with all of you here today, feeling the unity and knowing there's so many of us who are balancing it all is why I'm ecstatic to be here. We are mothers, wives, businesswomen, all of them difficult and sometimes thankless endeavors. But we're not alone. Each one of us here today has stories to tell, burdens to bear, and paths to forge. The concept of Jewish women providing is not a new one. It's referenced and extolled in the Eshes Chayil text. But the movement is relatively new. As women, our choices are hard. At any given time, we're traveling so many different paths. 
while simultaneously trying to find one for ourselves. We're teachers and therapists, chefs and drivers, partners and everything else that our lives require. But there are women who add to that requirement a path that's all their own, one where they call the shots. And that is the journey of the entrepreneur. I do not have the audacity to pretend that I have it perfectly worked out. I think that work and life cannot be completely separated into two entities. A secret formula to a balanced life does not exist. Or trust me, I would have brought it to market by now. But I can definitely tell you that no matter how difficult it is to juggle it all, I refuse to let guilt drive me. Regret has unfortunately become the trademark of Jewish women entrepreneurs. When women feel that guilt, it's because they're not owning a part of themselves. They're not analyzing their priorities in fear of realizing that there's so much more than what traditional society expects of them. And in truth, business is not for everyone. But if business is a part of you and who you are, then you have to stand up and own it. There's not a thing in the world that will take you down. When you can, women can accomplish anything, but not everything. We're just one person. It's up to us to prioritize, determine our dedication to each part of our lives, and split our commitment in a way that we feel most comfortable with. While the decision is made that your home cannot get all of you, because if you're an entrepreneur, that's not going to happen, there needs to be a support system picking up that slack. Yes, our husbands, they need to support us. We must hire help. While I see a superhero cape hanging from all of your shoulders, I know you can do it all, but not perfectly. We have to get used to compromise and realize that compromise does not equal suffering. With all of our roles and responsibility, we, JWEs, we know the rush, the feeling of accomplishment when we are able to achieve something against all odds. Those moments, that feeling, is what makes the juggling and the hard work so worth it. I am going to stand here and publicly admit that sometimes I do miss my kids' bedtime. I would reschedule or skip any important meeting to make it to my kids' plays and parties at school. But as someone with so many business obligations to count, I do come across situations where I'm being torn between my responsibilities as a mother and my duties as an executive. My six-year-old daughter couldn't be more thrilled and excited to come home one day with a note in her bag announcing the sitter play at her school. As I was marking it in my calendar, my heart dropped when I saw that it was scheduled to the same week that I was supposed to be in an arbitration overseas, an arbitration to settle a dispute of hundreds of millions of dollars that we were anxiously waiting to happen. I was facing a challenging decision, having to choose between my top two priorities, and I knew I had to make a huge sacrifice either way. I ultimately had no choice, and I decided to travel for the arbitration and miss my daughter's sitter play. I did reassure my daughter that I'll be watching her through a live stream, I did my best to comfort and console her and convince her that I would essentially be right there for her. The guilt was definitely getting to me. But overall, other, other than winning the arbitration and knowing it wouldn't have happened without my presence, I was, what reassured me was that having a mommy back at home who scored a win and is able to be emotionally present for her kids is a lot healthier than a stressed mommy who is physically present, but her mind is in an arbitration overseas. I'm sure there are people who would judge, 
people who would make a different decision, but I chose to be there for my daughter and my business in the best way I knew how. While painful compromise is sometimes necessary, it's the day-to-day -day balance and juggle that we most often struggle with. How you choose to balance is a personal decision. For me, Fridays are when my two worlds collide. I work from home. I'm the Jewish mom running around between the kitchen and phone calls, which I mute half of the time because of my kids. They do whatever they do. I'm responding to emails while cooking 20-course Bukharian Shabbat meals. And yes, I have almost sent my grandmother's recipe to the Bach to my associate. But I willingly subject myself to this chaos because giving my family that warm feeling fills my heart with joy. I want my kids to feel my excitement for Shabbat and for spending the time with them. As hectic as a work week can be, disconnecting on Shabbat is one of the best gifts Judaism has, gives, has given me and is, it is what gives me the power for the week ahead. Being a successful businesswoman is a combination of many talents, responsibilities, and abilities. Business is an art form with subtle details that affect success, perhaps the most important of which is presentation. Dress according to the businesswoman you want to be, not for others, but for yourself because appearance has a role in anything you want to achieve. With my heels on, I feel like I can conquer the world. It's funny how while I was negotiating the sale of one of our most iconic landmarks buildings in Manhattan, I was thinking about shoes. Unlike how I usually dress to work, I came in one day wearing flats as I was exhausted from an event that ran late the night before, and I wasn't expecting any meetings that day. That morning, the buyer calls me. We have been having negotiations with him for a few weeks now, and he asked for a rushed meeting to meet today to seal the deal and see if we can bridge all the gaps. I tried getting him to schedule uh, for another day as I wasn't emotionally ready for tough negotiations, with the presence of five lawyers on each side while I'm in my flats. But he insisted for a meeting that day, and I knew that postponing that meeting can be too much of a big risk. While realizing on the phone that a pair of heels is what all it took for me to get in that negotiation mood, I agreed to take the meeting that day and ran to Saks Fifth Avenue across the street to just get my confidence back on. Even though business has always been a part of me and I'm fairly confident in that world, a good pair of heels can turn confidence to fearlessness. I was born in Israel to a family where business was always a part of our lives. My father single-handedly built a name for himself as the world's largest privately held diamond manufacturer and distributor who broke the diamond monopoly back in the 80s. He has since then expanded his business into various other fields and has built what I call an empire. He is the hardest working person I have ever known, and I consider him to be my greatest inspiration. His life is one of giving, and his philanthropy is something I strive to emulate with every decision I make. Because of my father's businesses, I've lived in a few countries. It was hard, but I was forced to adjust. I got great at adapting and picked up six languages along the way. As prominent as my family is, there was never a time that I got things for free. My mom didn't hand us whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted. There needed to be a reason. We needed to earn it. Growing up in their household, a strong work ethic was non-negotiable. After graduating bar Ilan University, I went to work for Deloitte a company unrelated to my family's businesses. In my position as a financial advisor, I gained valuable experience and learned to see things from an employee's perspective and not from the vantage point of an executive. 
Having been an employee myself, I can relate to my staff, and it's an immensely beneficial skill that has served me well by running my own companies. About two years after, an opportunity came up in my father's business in Israel, and I was asked to join. I slowly built my way up, and after a couple of years, I was up for my next challenge. My dad suggested that I move to New York as the business in New York was expanding and he needed an eyes, his eyes in the sky, so to speak. Leaving Israel with a young family to start a new life in a different country, let alone a chaotic city like New York, is an immense challenge for itself. Add that to getting involved in a set of new businesses where I was facing the surprise of my life. There was no red carpet rolled out or a corner office waiting for me. Instead, I was denied access for information and any attempts for involvement in the companies were stonewalled. With a welcome party of this magnitude, I knew there had to be something they couldn't afford for me to find out. Unfortunately, I was right. And the next few years, I spent fighting to regain control on our own companies and rebuilding the business with a fresh and loyal team. These were some of the toughest years of my life. It was me against so many of them. I didn't have my daddy by my side, and I had to figure it out all on my own. As brutal and complex as those years were, I'm grateful for them because of the lessons I've picked up along the way. If there's only one thing you take out of my speech today, let it be this. Trust is far too easily betrayed when money is involved. While you may be friends with someone, you only, true, you only truly get to know your friends and their integrity when you work with them. I've seen people become moral degenerates for some money and a higher status. Being in charge of the finance, finances in your business is the key to protecting it. Hiring a team of employees, that's smart delegating. But if you're not checking in on them, you're leaving the foundation of your business in someone else's hands. There will be times you might think you're doing business with someone you trust, and what could possibly go wrong? But when you will have a dispute, and unfortunately those are inevitable, all that utopian tr trust crumbles to nothing. Don't save money on contracts. Don't rely on handshakes and dinner conversations because while everyone means well in the moment, Memories have a funny way of getting disordered when dollar signs are at stake. Instead of relying on good faith, agree on everything in advance and get them in writing. As a president and CEO of numerous companies in various industries, non-for-profits, board of directors, I can attest that titles are earned and delegated after hard work sweat and tears. Nothing worthwhile comes easy. Nothing I have is the result of a reputation I was born with, nor was it earned overnight. Am I the boss's daughter? Yes. Did I start off opening doors and picking up phone calls? You bet. Every woman in this room can verify that freebies do not exist. Many women are handed opportunities in our lives but it is up to us to turn those opportunities into something substantial. When people buy into the notion that things come easier for you because of who you are, be it the daughter, the wife, the friend, the sister, they couldn't be more wrong. You're facing more scrutiny and pressure. You're being judged and have more to prove because of your status. The one thing there's no shortcut for, one of the most imperative acquisitions you'll ever make is that of respect. Respect has to be earned. While earning the respect of your colleagues and associates is important, 
The ultimate respect, the accountability that matters most, is that of your own. When you're taking your makeup off at the end of the day, you're looking in front of the mirror. Can you say, I'm happy with the choices I made? To be a JWE is to be judged for how you connect to Hashem, for the way you raise your children, for the way you conduct your business. Everyone will have suggestions and advice to make you feel like you can't measure up. There is no right way to be Jewish or a right way to be a woman or a right way to be an entrepreneur, except for the way, the way that you define for yourself. Because that woman judging you from her daughter bus stop in the morning when you're flying to work, she's not you, you are. And you know what works for your life. When you go back to work immediately after having a baby, and when you come home and your husband is sleeping on the couch, you might want to start leaning back from your business. But that's when you let your entrepreneurial spirit come out. Remember why you started. Remember why you are pulling all those unrealistic hours every week off. Because you and I, we are so much more than just one thing. We are above judgment. We are rule makers and breakers. Look around the room. You're sitting next to someone who is the same in elite status as you are. We are members of the stressful, exhilarating, insane club, the club of the JWE. And when we come together, when we understand how powerful our potential is, when we reach our goals to set new ones, that is when history is made. I am beyond fortunate to witness history being made right here, right now, by all of us Jewish women entrepreneurs. Thank you so much.